The Wild West has always been shrouded in mystery, filled with stories of daring outlaws and brave lawmen. But perhaps no story is as compelling as the death of Field Marshal Bill Tillman, the legendary Dodge City attorney. Was it a catastrophic crash or something more sinister? Join us as we delve into the mysterious life and circumstances surrounding the death of one of the most iconic figures in the history of the Old West. Remember to hit the like button because it helps us a lot. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the notification bell to not miss the upcoming interesting videos. William Matthew Tillman Jr. is a lawman, gladiator, and professional politician based in Kansas and Oklahoma. Bill was born in Fort Dodge, Iowa on July 4, 1854. He was the third of six children born to William Matthew Tillman Sr. and his wife, Amanda Shepard. In 1857, the family moved to a farm near Atchison in the newly formed Kansas Territory. At the age of 17, Bill Tillman won a contract to supply buffalo meat to the builders of the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad. He claimed to have killed 3,300 buffalo between September 1, 1871 and April 1, 1872, which he said was an all-time record. And if that wasn't enough, according to jo Zoe Tillman, his second wife, he also ended the two Cheyenne warriors when they confronted him. In early 1877, Tillman and Henry Garris opened the Crystal Palace Saloon in Dodge City. A local newspaper reported this place received a new facade and patio in the summer. This development only adds to the appeal of the pub and attracts more people to enjoy its refreshments. But just over a year later, the duo sold the Crystal Palace Saloon. In January 1878, Bill Tillman was appointed deputy sheriff from Bat Masterson and began his legal work. However, within a month of his appointment, he was charged with being an accomplice in a train robbery. On February 12th, the charges against him were dropped for lack of evidence. Tillman was again on suspicion two months later, on April 16th, when he was arrested by Masterson for horse theft. Again, the allegations were dismissed. On March 8, 1879, Masterson had to auction off Tillman's Dodge City home, apparently to satisfy the ruling. On November 6, 1883, Patrick F. Sugru was elected sheriff of Ford County and Bill Tillman became his deputy. At the same time, Tillman owned a popular pub in Dodge City called Oasis. In early April 1884, Tillman sold Oasis to his brother Frank, who promised to repair and refurbish the tavern. Tillman earned his first important position of attorney on April 10, 1884, when he was appointed Field Marshal of Dodge City. Tillman's outstanding performance earned him a solid gold badge from the citizens of the city of Dodge on May 2, 1884. In a biography of his husband, Tillman's second wife, he and Assistant Field Marshal Ben Daniels were responsible for running mysterious Dave Mather out of Dodge in July 1885. However, Mather's 1992 biographer countered the story, arguing that Mather was scheduled to stand trial for murder at the time. The city of Dodge Sheriff and Assistant Sheriff will not be dealing with a man about to be indicted, but will simply detain him. On March 9, 1886, Tillman resigned as city sheriff to take care of his ranch after a great blizzard of 1886 destroyed the herds of many farms in the area, including his own. In January 1889, Bill Tillman was one of the famous Dodge City gunmen involved in the Gray County War. The fight was fought between the rival towns of Ingalls and Cimarron in Kansas. In a fierce battle between the two factions, one person was killed and five were injured. Fortunately, Tillman escaped with nothing more serious than a sprained ankle. The following year, 1889, Oklahoma saw the first major land race in Guthrie. 
a previously non-existent city, Guthrie now has an immediate population of 15,000. One of those people was Bill Tillman, who built a commercial building on his Oklahoma Avenue lot and used the rent from it to help reinvest as a rancher. From that point on, for the remaining 35 years of his life, Tillman was an Oklahoman. Another land race took place on September 22, 1891, and Tillman established a farm. During this period, however, Oklahoma was being ravaged by many outlaws, most notably Bill Doolin and his gang, the Wild Bunch. Tillman and his fellow attorneys were determined to stop them. In May 1892, Tillman was appointed Vice Marshal of the United States in Oklahoma. He joins forces with deputy marshals such as Heck Thomas, Chris Madsen, Frank Canton, and Bud Ledbetter to wage an all-out war against the outlaws operating in the territory. September 16, 1893, during the Cherokee Strip land rush, saw the founding of the new town of Perry, Oklahoma, and the appointment of the venerable Bill Tillman as town marshal on May 21st. With his trusted assistant marshal, Heck Thomas, both Tillman and Thomas hold the duties of deputy U.S. sheriff. He worked tirelessly to establish law and order in Perry, then he turned his attention to the infamous Doolin gang. Tillman's relentless pursuit of outlaws led to Doolin's gang near destruction. Chris Madsen's team successfully killed Tulsa Jack Blake on April 4, 1895, followed by the murders of George Bitter Creek Newcomb and Charlie Pierce on May 2nd. On September 6, 1895, Tillman and two deputy attorneys general, another marshal, eventually tracked down William F. Little Bill Raidler. Raidler refused to surrender and open fire, but Tillman and his team were prepared. After an intense gunfight, Raidler is knocked down by a precision shot from Tillman. Although the outlaw survived his wounds, he is still sentenced to 10 years in prison. Tillman's moment of glory came on January 15, 1896, when he bravely captured Bill Doolin, the notorious leader of the Wild Bunch. Tillman relentlessly pursued Doolin to a health resort in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. Without a moment's hesitation, he boldly entered the bathroom where Doolin was sitting comfortably in the lobby. There was so much steam at the time that Doolin couldn't recognize Tillman. Tillman quickly bravely confronted the outlaw in a grueling struggle, eventually capturing him without firing a single shot. Once Doolin was safely held, Tillman wasted no time and telegraphed U.S. Marshal Evett Dumas Nix of Guthrie, Oklahoma, with the triumphant message, I've got him. We'll get there. Tomorrow. Tillman. The next day, an incredible crowd of more than 2,000 people gathered at Guthrie train station, eagerly awaiting the arrival of Tillman with Doolin. After the demise of the Doolin Wild Bunch, Tillman, Heck Thomas, and Chris Madsen became known collectively as the three bodyguards of Oklahoma. Bill Tillman's success continued in 1899 when he founded Oakland Ranch, where he bred high-quality thoroughbred horses. To get the best breed, Bill went to Kentucky and bought two horses, one of which was Chant a thoroughbred racehorse that won the 1894 Kentucky Derby. Bill then ran for sheriff of Lincoln County, Oklahoma in 1900 and won easily. He was re-elected two years later. However, tragedy struck when his wife, Flora Kendall Tillman, died at the age of 39 on October 12, 1900. In 1903, at the age of 49, Bill Tillman remarried Zoe Agnes Stratton 26 years his junior, and a graduate of the University of Oklahoma. Together they have three sons named Tench, Richard, and Woodrow. In 1924, Tillman, then 70 years old, went to Cromwell, Oklahoma as a special investigator. He previously clashed with Wiley Lynn, a corrupt U.S. government agent. And on October 31st, Tillman confronted Lynn, who was drunk and opened fire. 
Tillman managed to capture Lin without resorting to his own gun and with the help of a bystander and disarmed him. However, Lin quickly pulled out a second pistol and shot Tillman several times, resulting in the lawman's untimely death the next day. During Lin's controversial trial, he was acquitted of murder after defending himself, but justice prevailed in the end, as Lin was later shot dead in a gunfight in 1932. Governor Martin E. Trapp made the poignant decision to leave Tillman's body intact in the dome of the courthouse. At the funeral, Governor Trapp, former JBA Governor Robertson, Oklahoma Attorney General George Short, and U.S. Marshal Alva McDonald carry Tillman's coffin. Tillman is the third person and the first police officer to receive such a grand honor. Tillman is buried in Chandler, Oklahoma, and a park in town bears his name. His legacy as a brave lawman and defender of justice lives on, inspiring future generations. Tillman's sacrifice in the line of duty is the best testament to his bravery and unwavering commitment to law enforcement. May his memory continue to be a reminder of the importance of integrity and justice in our society. Please like and share if you find the video content interesting and useful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment below so as not to miss the upcoming interesting videos. Thanks for watching.